Well, I just finished up that exposure therapy video. Um, not an expert on this stuff, except for the fact that I've dealt with it for so long. Um, and I think in our own way, we're all experts. Um, anybody that suffers from agoraphobia, panic attacks, I think we all are our own best therapists because only us on the inside know what we truly need. Um, people that go to school for this kind of stuff, and I'm not putting them down, but unless you have agoraphobia or panic disorder, you can never know what it feels like or the kind of lives we have to live every day. Um, a lot of people aren't familiar with exposure therapy, and that's a shame because you could increase your happiness, your your range of life by doing exposure therapy. Um, whether it's just standing on a porch or whether, whether it's going for a drive, it doesn't matter what you do as long as you break the monotony that you, you live with on a day-to-day -day basis. And same thing I say in all my videos, never give up, never quit, always believe in yourself. Um, this is a rough video. I, I've never made one like this before. Um, I feel like I kind of rushed it. I, you know, exposure therapy differs for each person. Uh, for one person, it might be, you know, sitting on their front steps. For another person, it might be driving an hour away from home. But um, I did the best that I could to kind of give people an idea or a foundation or something like that where they could set up on and make their own routine. So I hope you guys enjoy this, and I really hope that. You know, this could help somebody, encourage somebody, give somebody some positivity. Enjoy. All right, so here we are. We're going to start the exposure therapy. Uh, I want to show you guys something real fast. Um, this is a little experiment that I'm working on. I have a nonprofit organization uh, that's dedicated to people like us, agoraphobics, people with panic disorder. This was generously donated by a friend of mine. And my plans with this, I just want to show you guys real fast. I'm going to find some people that are local that may be suffering from agoraphobia and use this for exposure therapy. Come pick them up. Got everything we need. We got our bathroom. I mean, obviously it's a project. I uh, got a stove, fridge. You know, it's like a little home, maybe a little uh, more comfortable for people with agoraphobia to travel in. But like I said, that's just something I got in the works. I wanted to show you guys real fast. But we are going to go on with the exposure therapy because I don't want to make this too long of a video. As you can see, I've got my little travel companion that goes everywhere with me. Other car, babe. I am blessed to have a dog that does not like when I don't leave or when I leave without her. Okay. The inside of an agoraphobics car, for me, number one necessity. Nice bottle of cold water. Sunglasses, because I am sensitive to light, as I'm sure a lot of you are. And, you know, something that makes me feel happy, comfortable. It could vary. I don't judge people on beliefs. So we're going to get right on with this. And we're going to do it. Because that's the only thing you can do, is you do it. Sorry if the camera gets a little bumpy. But the biggest step is right now. This is the this is the, the do or don't period. And as you can see, I have a very long street. <laughs> Being agoraphobic, this sucks because the street is so long that I've literally made it halfway down the street and not been able to continue. I've had to turn around. That's a terrible feeling, but I'm doing this for what I call my people, the agoraphobics, people with panic disorder. So we're gonna go through. We're gonna we're gonna accomplish this. We're gonna do what we're doing. I am doing this at five o'clock. I made sure I did it during rush hour, so there was as much traffic as possible. Okay. So as far as exposure therapy, for some people, this would be it. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with this. This is as far as some people might go. You come up to the end of your street, you sit here, and you just look at the world. That could be a good baby step, because it's all about baby steps. But in this case, and I know I'm moving pretty quick here, just kind of trying to get through this, we're going to go all the way. 
So we're going to get onto a very busy street. And we're going to go someplace. And it's someplace that I frequently go. And you'll see why. Now, the way I feel right now, um, outside of the fact that I'm talking to myself, <laughs> well, that's what the way it appears in the cars. I have some anxiety. Um, but I, I really hope that this video is going to help a lot of people. Because I know it's definitely helping myself. I have the dizziness right now. The fear. I guess uh, you would say the normal stuff. Um, let's go with anxiety on a scale of 1 to 10. I'm probably at around uh, 6 or 7 right now. Especially when people just stop in front of me like that. Yeah, I, I might do have a little bit of room rage. I think all the agoraphobics do. So we're gonna head on to. Uh, I live in East Lake, Ohio, by the way. I am just a couple minutes away from Lake Erie. And that's actually where we're heading. Okay, so this is a scary road. This is a no turn back type of road. Uh, and this road's always kind of been a little bit of a struggle. Because right now, at this second, if I if I had a full blown panic attack, I have to wait to the next street to get off of this. And luckily, I mean, I don't live in the country or anything, so it's not a half an hour to go anywhere. But it doesn't matter a half an hour a half a minute is pretty much the same but uh as like i stopped before um this would be a good turnaround point for exposure therapy i'm exposing myself to the things that i have a fear of so right now if i made a right hand turn and went home and I made it home. That's that's great. That's awesome. I, I got out, exposed my. I don't want to say exposed myself because that don't sound right, but got some exposure to the outside world. Um, and I beat agoraphobia for that day. But like I said, for all intents and purposes, I'm going to force myself to go all the way to my destination, which really isn't that bad. Especially making the video, I know that, you know, there's people watching this right now that hopefully are getting inspired, ex inspired, sorry, uh, panic is going up a little bit, probably to, uh, to an eight. You know, the further you get away from home, the more intense anxiety can become if you let it. That's the key, if you let it. And I'm not going to let it right now. And don't get me wrong, you don't always have that option. You, you can't always say, no, this, I'm not going to let it happen because sometimes panic attack will absolutely bring you home. Agoraphobia will absolutely bring you home. And that's okay. It's okay to lose to it once in a while. But like I say in all my videos, just never give up. Um, if I were to fail right now and go home, you believe I would shoot this video again later today. I would have to be hard for me to go to bed if I didn't shoot this video today. And some great people on a um, support group that I belong to, I'm not going to say the name, like always, is, you know, for confidentiality purposes, but it's a support group on Facebook, are very encouraging to me, and you know, I'm making this video a lot for them, because they've helped me out so much. So now we're, uh, we're on Lakeshore. Um, seven minutes from home. A couple of years ago, this would have been impossible for me. Even right now, it's a little hard. You know, being rush hour is not too bad today. But this is my idea of exposure therapy. Going to the doctors, I don't consider that exposure therapy. I consider that torture. 
because that's an obligation that has to be done. So now, thank God, we're going to be getting off of some, some busy streets. And we're going to head toward our destination. And pushing yourself with exposure therapy is necessary because if you believe the fear, the voice in your head that says, don't do it, you're never going to get out of the house, you're never going to do anything, you're not going to accomplish it. So now we're going to head down a more quiet road, which I'm actually, I actually do worse on because, oh, there's some gear over there. Oh, better pay attention to the road. I actually do worse on these quiet roads because I have this fear that, you know, I could pass out or I could have a heart attack and I'll be sitting on the side of the road and nobody will see me for a while. Sometimes in traffic, I feel like I, I'm doing a little better. But I know that's, that's not the case. So we are nine minutes into the video. My anxiety is pretty much holding steady at a seven, which uh, I, I consider high. Eight, nine, and 10, I'm pretty much have headphones on, trying to avoid the world, do some breathing. But right now is the point to where, you know, I'm gonna do my deep breathing. And that I like to look at as preventive maintenance. stop a panic attack before it happens and we are pretty much at our destination the goal that I set out for myself I've reached the destination this is a brick wall it's a CEI it's a power plant and of course they're not open why would they be well I kind of ruined this experiment. All right. So I have a choice now. I could get out of the car and hop the fence, but I don't really feel I'm gonna do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do what panic attack and anxiety likes to do. I'm gonna switch the game up a little bit. Beautiful view of Lake Erie, by the way, over there. Kind of sucks that I can't get to it. But this is part of uh, exposure therapy is switching the game out here. Let's do this. Let's go way I've never been before. Because the worst thing with uh, agoraphobia and panic disorder is getting lost. Man, when I don't know where I'm at, that's that's when the panic anxiety really kicks in. Uh, looks like we're at a marina. I'm just going to go this way. And I'm going to show you guys uh, what I see. Looks like I'm actually in somebody's driveway. <laughs> Oops, let me back up out of here. Yeah, I drive a little crazy. I think our oligorophobics do. We don't like to uh, play around too much. But there is, uh, I do have a backup plan that I'm going to put in force now because once in a while that brake wall is closed for whatever reason. But you can see the, the beautiful view of Lake Erie, dirty Lake Erie. So we're going to go to the backup place that I had in mind. 12 minutes in and I'm feeling pretty good. I, I got the lightheadedness, you know, my, my heart's probably going a little bit. Other than that though, I'm I'm facing my fears. I haven't had to put my sunglasses on. I'm just going to open my water now. But that's because I'm thirsty. I'm not trying to distract myself. And for me, not having the radio on is, is driving me insane. Um, I don't know if you're like me and you'll be listening to the radio. The panic attack hits. You'll start hitting buttons, switching tracks, going to different stations. And what that is is a means of trying to escape or get out of that situation by switching to a different song. That's my theory on it anyway. So we're going to go down here, it's my backup plan. Maybe. Yeah. See, I was 
got to have a backup plan with uh, exposure therapy because nine times out of ten, it's not going to go the way you originally planned it. So this is a nice park, nice little area. If you're living in the city, having stuff like this, this almost really helps. Nice and bumpy. So basically, I'm just going to stop here, and now uh, we're going to enjoy this beautiful view for a minute. Let's so go ahead and take the camera off. Shut down the car. Go ahead and let the dog out and run. Molly. Go do a dog thing. Go do something cute for the camera. But yeah, this is pretty much uh, exposure therapy, I guess, at its finest. Um, didn't get to go to where I wanted to go, but I'm kind of glad that happened because. Uh, the panic disorder and panic attacks and agoraphobia, nothing really happens the way you plan on letting it happen. But this is a very nice, tranquil area. And this is good. Right, back in the car. I'm the guy that didn't charge his phone before I decided to shoot a video. So here I am. Need some exposure therapy, which every agoraphobic needs to do. Maybe not to this extent, but you know, this is the, uh, in my mind, the ultimate. And I do want to do a video at Walmart. That's the next plan because I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys could agree with me that Walmart, I'm just going to drive through the grass, I got a big truck. That Walmart is probably one of the worst places for an agoraphobic to be. But um, here's, here's, here's the trick in exposure therapy. Now right now I've completed my goal. I, I, I came, I got to where I wanted to be. I'm here now. Here's the trick to the key to exposure therapy. Don't rush. Drag it out if you can. I mean, there's a beautiful little uh, site up there. I don't know if you can see it as good as I can. You know, it's just a hill with a train on it, but anything besides your own walls in your house is beautiful if you're homebound, which I used to be. I spent uh, my, a year and a half of my life in my house, not able to leave, not able to look out a window. And I'm gonna see if I can uh, get some videotape of those deer. Us city folk, when we see deer, we get excited still, so. But this is this is my idea of exposure therapy. Uh, for some people, it may be more. For some people, it may be less. But here's where the deer were, and yeah, they're gone. So, oh wait, there she went. It's almost ran into the street. Yeah, I'm a city boy. I get excited when I see deer. So that's that. All right, now the ride home. This is this is a key thing because the ride home is two things for an agoraphobic. It's either very quick, meaning it goes fast, or it's a it's a race. It's a rat race to get home. I've got a radar detector on my truck. Um, I'm not encouraging anybody to ever speed, but. You know, sometimes you gotta go quicker. I mean, I'm not gonna deny the facts. So we're coming back up to that main road. We're 17 minutes into the video. You know, the person without agoraphobia, 17 minutes out of the house is nothing. But to somebody with agoraphobia, I uh, guess we can multiply that a couple times. Probably feels like about two hours. And my anxiety level is probably back down to a six. 
really sucks that the pier wasn't open because I wanted to show you guys that that's my little safe haven. That's where I go to kind of get away. But I am on a familiar route. And I think with exposure therapy, it's good to have a familiar route, but you have to expand out of your comfort zone. It's a saying once that it said, uh, life begins where your comfort zone ends. Probably gonna hit every light on the way home. Well, if I was having a panic attack, I would definitely hit every light on the way home. But exposure therapy is about taking your time. If I, if I start rushing right now, I'm gonna send a false message to my mind saying that something's wrong and I need to hurry. And that's the last thing I wanna do. I don't wanna rush, I wanna take it nice and slow because that sends a signal to my mind that everything is okay. There's no immediate threat, there's no danger. That kind of keeps the panic away. Always focus on your breathing. It's funny, I, you know, everybody always says breathing is so important. And, you know, if you think about it, if you don't breathe, you'll die. But that's not exactly what we mean. We have to keep our breaths calm to keep our, our heart rate normal. Uh, helps us to not, to not hyperventilate. Shallow breathing is your worst enemy. That's what actually causes, causes hyperventilation. And that has a ripple effect that causes dizziness, um, heart palpitations, all types of negative things. So deep breaths. So now that we're getting a little congested in traffic, I can feel the anxiety a little more. I'm going to keep it at a nice steady pace because like I said before this is very important if you rush you're going to send a false signal to your mind that there's a danger and once that that false signal gets up into your head we all know how impossible it is to get rid of it's very hard to get rid of that uh, that false alarm that fight or flight false alarm that goes off that causes panic attacks. This is why I want to do this at rush hour because this is the hardest time for me and I'm sure it's the hardest time for a lot of you guys. Got to put the window down to get some fresh air. Now a way that this video could be beneficial for anybody is just pretend you're with me. That's why I put the camera on the front. You know, if you can't, if your comfort zone is four houses down, watch this video. This is, um, uh, I talk better when I'm at home. This is virtual reality, really. Virtual reality for agoraphobics. And I don't see how this could hurt. Now, the closer I get to my house, the better I feel. You, know, you get that feeling of accomplishment, and that lasts for a long time. Now, if I would have only made it down the street and had it turn around, I wouldn't have that feeling of accomplishment. I would feel terrible, and that would make the next time I would try to do exposure therapy even harder. Funny, there's people in cars looking at me. Luckily, my dog's with me, so I don't look completely crazy. It just looks like I'm talking to her. This is how awesome my dog is. Let me show you. She just sits there. Yep. Anywhere but home, right? No, she's anti. She's the exact opposite of agoraphobic. She hates being home. That was a bad time to pick up the camera. See, if I was having a panic attack right now, this would suck. 
It's, it's, it's a hard, my street's a hard street to turn down. And I might make a foolish move and try to, you know, go right now. And that can cause an accident and do harm to others as well as myself. That's why I said earlier, it's important to keep everything at a calm, comfortable pace. Because if I were to rush it, that would immediately kick in my fight or flight. Alright, back on my street. Anxiety is back down to a normal level. And that whole ordeal was 23 minutes. It's not bad. But like I said, that was a full-blown exposure therapy. I'm going to call it experiment because I've never videotaped it before. And I really hope that somebody can take something positive away from this. Um, like I said, you could have made it a quarter away, half the way, three times the distance that I made it, and that's awesome. Being agoraphobic, if you could do anything, that's great. And I am back home now. So that's going to end this. Um, the most important part is just don't ever give up. You know, I was scared to do that, but I did it. I did it for myself, and I did it so maybe I could help some other people. And hopefully it does. Hopefully uh, some of you guys get some positivity from this. I'm going to wrap up this video probably on a different format, so just bear with me here. Thanks to the lady for coming with me. Always rolling with me. And I'll see you guys in a minute.